Welcome back to another episode of Deals with Daryl. And today we're gonna to be talking about a questionnaire list. So you have to send a questionnaire list to your clients, right? Now you just got a new lead, you're really excited. I remember the first time I got a lead, I was excited, but I kind of messed it up because I was like, uh, so what do you want on the website? It's like, no, 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 you have to go in there and be prepared. So I'm gonna show you all how to create a professionally made questionnaire list on questions to ask your your leads and questions not to ask your leads. Trust me, I asked some really stupid questions and it made my job a lot harder for my current project. So you guys can use this specific list for your web design business. And with that said, let's go ahead and check out the questionnaire list. So welcome to my questionnaire list. So I'm gonna go through each of these and explain why we are asking them these questions and why we do not ask certain questions to clients. Now remember guys, this is business. Don't take anything personal, okay? If someone says, oh, why are you asking this? Just explain to them as nice as possible that you're asking this for a specific reason or whatever. But remember, never take anything personal. Key, key, key concept. So good questions to ask. Number one, do you have any example websites you like? So this will kind of help you understand what kind of style or theme that your client wants for their current websites. Now, as a developer or designer, guys, do not copy websites i found that when i was working before and other developers or designers asked this question they would just copy and paste the other website i'm saying guys get inspiration but don't have it too familiar okay so uh, as a as a designer don't get too don't, don't make it too exact of the other websites okay that's a key one because i've seen that problem with a lot of web designers number two do you have a website already do you want to carry anything over to your new website. So if they have a website, you might wanna ask them what it is because you're gonna use WordPress so you can go ahead and remake that website with WordPress. Do you have anything that you want to carry over to a new website like blog posts? Okay, that's a key one because remember, if they're a blogging website and they wrote 100 blog posts and you just make a website without migrating anything over, you're gonna have a pissed off person on your end. <laughs> you know, they're gonna say, hey, what about our blog post, dude? You know, So that's why you need to ask this question because it could be a lot of work and um, if they are not using WordPress, you might have to replicate those posts. So that's always a good question to ask to give you a, a better idea of how to price everything. Number three, do you have logos or colors or styles you want? Are you open to revamping the website? Let's say for example, their website looks like shit, you know, and that's a common one. You're gonna have people that think their website looks amazing and great, and you know it doesn't look good. So you can just say, hey, look, um, you know, we can, work off your logo, maybe these colors, but are you open to revamping the website? You can charge them more. And when your client sees a website that looks a lot better than their previous one, they're gonna say, oh my gosh, man, like I didn't know how bad my website was before. So always ask that question and you can always, it'll benefit both of you. You can charge them more and they can have a beautiful website. Number four, this is a key one. This is important, very important. I learned this one the hard way again, because I used to, I built a website that was um, selling tarot cards. It, it was a disaster project. It was like my third project ever. It was really bad. So do you want any spe special functions? Be as specific as you can. So if they want a booking website, if they want a membership website, a a contact form with conditional logic that can maybe accept payments like WP forms. You need to ask them this because that can help you quote your website better. So, you know, if they want a booking system, that might take a little bit longer. You might have to spend two days or three days with a booking plugin to kind of fit their needs. So, um, remember, ask them this question, be as specific as possible. Uh, and they might say, oh, just a plain website. So just, okay, just a plain website, nothing extra. And then they might be like, well, actually, so you wanna get that out of the way so you don't have scope creep, so you're not stuck with the project that's really hard and you got screwed on. So make sure to ask that question. Number five, what would be the main purpose of your website? So when you ask this question, you can kind of help revamp the website or build it based off what they're trying to accomplish. So for example, if there are those fake gurus who want to sell you a, a, a scammy ebook and sell you all the fake stuff, then they're more geared for marketing and lead conversion based. So you might want to build a website based off of that. If they are a blog, like a weight loss blog, then you kind of know that you're, you're dealing with people or visitors that potentially want to lose weight. So you don't want to, uh, you want to have things that encourage that sort of niche or whatever you're trying to build. So that's why it's important to ask them what's the purpose of their websites. Number six, how many pages would you like to see? Now, now notice how I said, would you like to see like your home services and contact us? 
don't ask them how many pages do you want. It's a very, it's a very confusing question, and when you ask them this. Uh, you know, go with caution. So saying, hey, so uh, we can make your home, your about, your services, your contact, and your project page. How does that sound? But if you just say, how many pages do you want? It, it's it's a very uninviting question. It deters them away from you. It's like, I don't know, man. You know what? Forget this. This is too complicated, bro. I'll just go to Wix. So remember, uh, you want to go ahead and lead them up to that. So, so um, how many pages do you want? We have your home, your services, your contact. So quote the pages for them but don't ask them how many pages indirectly. It's very uninviting. So number seven is, are you in the United States? Now this is important because some parts of the world will not accept certain payments. So for example, certain merchant services, they will not take certain payments from parts of the world and that's just how it goes. So you wanna make sure before you do everything that you're not working with the country that you can't accept payments from. You can use PayPal, but always check with your provider first because I have had personal problems with certain countries not being able to accept payments from my merchants and it was just a nightmare i'm saying man i have this clients and then you're scouring around looking you're signing up for all these random websites and it, it's a, it's a disaster so just ask them that question it'll save you a lot of hassle number eight do you have hosting and a domain already this is important because if they have hosting that they're comfortable with you need to make sure to get all of their credentials you need to go ahead and have them call the company and say you are an authorized person and so on and so forth if they are open to change hosting, you, you should host it. You host it and then you charge them a monthly fee. You know, that's that's what I like to do. It gives you a lot more control over your clients in the situation. And you can always sell them stuff later like a, you know, SEO package or a maintenance plan or whatever. It just, it makes everything a lot easier for the web designer. So number nine, do you have, do you or an employee want to edit the website? If so, what is your technical experience with whatever WordPress? Now, the reason why you ask this, and you probably have already learned this, is because what happens is you build a website, you introduce them to Divi or something, or Brizzy or Elementor, they go, oh, I know how to do this. And then they start messing around with it, and then they ruin the whole website. And it's like, okay, look, so we need to know, okay, are you familiar with these? Do you need me to sit down and teach you? That'll cost you a little bit extra. Maybe you can make a video, but uh, just make sure that they are familiar with WordPress. And if they are not, sit down, give them a video that you probably pre-made already or something like that and teach them and also assign a role. So if you are uh, handing them over the, the, the project, assign them a role. So with Elementor and Divi, you can give them roles where they can't edit certain parts of the website. Like for example, they can only edit the blog page. That's also very important. And I'll have a video on that in the next three weeks. And number 10, anything else you want to know or see about your website? Now this is important because this is the time where your client comes out and says, okay, I, I want uh, you know, add this a little bit, add that. Uh, can you move my logo over there? Just something to make your client happy. Remember, we want to keep these annoying people happy. All right. So that's just, I know clients can be nightmares. It's, it's sad, but that's just the sad truth, but uh, do your best and, uh, you know, build a good relationship with them. So they're not a nightmare. And I think we've all had our nightmare experiences. So, uh, trust me, I have licked the pot clean with that one. So, and now questions that are good to ask for upsells. Now you should include these in your questionnaire because this is where you can make money. And on my last episode, we talked about recurring revenue, right? So why don't you ask those questions? as a way to make more recurring revenue from your clients. So number one, would you like to be easily found on Google with a boosted SEO plan for your website? Now that sounds good, boosted plan. It's like, oh, you're gonna boost my website up? Oh man, let's let's get it boosted, you know? So when you use these terms, they're marketing terms, but at the same time, you are helping your client because without an SEO plan, their site's gonna be dangling in the middle of the ocean. It's like, all right, well, you got a website, see you later, you know? And that would be the end of it. So number two, would you like someone to write content for your website on a regular basis to make it lively? So here you want to introduce a content writer. So you'd want to say, hey, you know what? We can make your website look really live, have some fresh content. We can talk about you and your business. How does that sound? And they're like, mm, well, now that you mentioned this, I, I think I'll take that offer. And then you can charge them whatever you're offering. Number three, would you like help with social media or be interested in a dedicated virtual agent that will save you money. So let's say for instance, this person's just really busy and they don't have time to deal with live chat agents or they might need help around the office. This is a great time to actually offer them something like a virtual agent.
Now let's talk about things you should not ask, and then we'll jump into a secret question that you must ask all of your clients. But before that, let's go to things you should not ask. So what kind of fonts do you want to see? Now, personally, I don't like to ask this because then the client starts to think of different styles and all oh, this changes to this, this changes to this, and it leaves you in a, in a, in a situation where you're kind of working for them and you're not building the website for your clients and it just it just becomes a nightmare. So try to envision a website and implement fonts that you think are necessary for their specific niche. Remember, the more options you give them, the worse it's gonna be. So just remember that, that should be my golden rule, you know? Number two, how many pages do you want? That's just very uninviting. It doesn't sound good and it's confusing. It's like, what I asked you, how many pages do you want on the website? You know, it's like, well, I don't know, man, I, I, how many pages come on a website? I don't know this stuff. So you wanna make sure that you don't ask them that because it's just, it's just not really inviting. And also this one, the next one, what's your budget? Now, many people ask this question that are not from the United States. I don't know if people in Europe ask this question, but generally in India, this is a very popular phrase and you should not ask clients this in America because it's a very uninviting, it's a very, What's your, it's a very, per, it's almost like a personal attack. It's like, how much money do you have? You know, you, you don't ask that question. You give them the price. So when you say, what's your budget? It's basically saying, so what? If I say a hundred dollars, will you say yes? Or a thousand, will I say yes? It, we don't know what you're trying to do, what to do here. And it kind of puts me in an awkward position. It's like, well, why don't you give me a price and let's work on that price. And when you say, what's your budget? It's like, I got a million dollars. So you can charge me a million dollars for my website. Again, it's a terrible question to ask. Do not ask what's your budget. It's just very uninviting and it's it could be leaning towards a personal attack. Next, when are you looking to have your website finished? Now, you're gonna tell them this. So when you get the information, you're going to tell them this website could be finished at around two to four weeks. Now, the reason why I say that is because you don't want them dictating to you, I need this website tomorrow, you know? Don't, don't worry about that. Just say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna make this you know, proposal for you and we're gonna tell you how long it's gonna take. The reason why is because a lot of people tend to want it as fast as possible, but just say, hey, you got two weeks, is that okay? And they're like, okay, you know, two weeks is cool. You know, just, just give them a, a general time frame and do not allow them to tell you when they need it because you don't wanna put yourself in a position where you're working in a, in a very rushed environment. It's terrible, I've done it before. And the last one, what builder or features or like a slider would you like to see? Don't give them any customizable options. Don't give them, you know, just build what you think is good. Cause if you start saying sliders, if you start saying uh, like, uh, oh, the revolution slider with all the JavaScript animations and take a look at this, this looks so cool. It's gonna confuse them and they don't know any better. You know, they're not, they're not designers. They're just regular people. So build them something that's simple, but looks really professional, but not too creative, not too voila, you know? So just keep it basic, keep it simple, and don't ask them what kind of features. You build it for them and let them decide what they think about it. Now, this is the most important question, and you should always ask this, and this is actually part of the upsell, but I felt that this is a must ask because you are using WordPress, and that is, would you like to see a maintenance package? And use this, use this phrase. If your website is not maintained by your current host provider settings, your website will break and will be very hard to fix. Now remember, the PHP settings for the hosting provider will eventually change. So you don't wanna make it sound like it's your fault or your problem, just say, well, your hosting company is gonna do this, not me, and that's just how it goes. So you wanna kinda of protect yourself and defend yourself when you're asking this question, right? So would you like to have a maintenance package, or oh, I spelled that wrong. How? How, how dare I do that? Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna edit that out, don't worry. <laughs> I'm a, I, I told you guys before, I'm terrible at English. So maintenance packages, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this after the video though. Maintenance packages to help optimize the website, make sure speeds are fast, and to ensure uptime for your website. So you wanna go ahead and upsell them, yet make it sound like it's a necessary upsell. Like, okay, so your website will be optimized, it'll be fast, you will make sure it's online. Would you like that? And it kind of puts the client in a situation where they're forced to say yes, because if they say no, they're gonna sound like, oh man, my website's gonna be slow, it's gonna be crap, I don't want that, you know? Give me the package, give me, give me the boosted package. So always ask these questions when you are um, having a potential lead. They will protect you, they will save you from a lot of different hassles and problems. Also, if you guys wanna take a look at my websites, feel free to go ahead and take a look. I'm still building it right now, so if you guys wanna go ahead and roast me, saying, hey, Daryl, the website looks terrible, it's too much, 
go ahead and let me know in the comments below. But I hope this list helped you out. I know I wish I had it when I first got started. I I was all over the place, guys, and I'm sure you are too. So use this list. I'll go ahead and update it, and I'll make sure the spelling is correct. So um, yeah, that was my episode of Deals with Dural. What did you think? Did this episode help you out? Do you think that these questions will help you in your future project? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take it easy.